Back in 1986, I don't think many people expected Street Fighter to be the hit that it was. Be terrified of anyone who did, because it came out in 1987. Not on Sega Master System, not on Atari, not on PS-2, but in the... <sighs> Arcades. These were the baby days of gaming. Heh. Call of Duty? Heh. Battlefield? Heh. Call of Field? No! Back in my day, we only had Galaga. And by my day, I mean some old guy who's probably dead now. Good riddance to Galaga, not the sea now. Whom I am not legally responsible for! It's just, I love how retro gaming was such a unique pocket of time. When bits were gaming itself. When developers were still learning what sticks and what doesn't. When this was acceptable. Uh, I don't know. Was it? Can someone just quickly tell me so I can have the right opinion? It was the age of very basic controls, gambles on the quality, reasonable assumptions on the quality. Old! Very old! Despite the limits of gaming in the 80s and 90s, this era gave birth to many classics, none of which include Battletoads. Hell, you could even argue the limitations of what give rise to such creativity. And one classic that has stood the test of time is Street Fighter 2, yeah, you'd know it. The grandfather of fighting games, great grandfather, uncle, ancestor? I mean shit, that's way too ambiguous. Uh, the thing is, uh, there are a lot of old fighting games, so the generics are kind of screwed, but uh, oh, I got it! Street Fighter 2 was the ultimate payer of child support. It paid child support like no one else did, and it was good at it too. It set off the explosion of the fighting game genre. Oh, but this game I pretend to like is actually the true first one. Yeah, maybe. Oh, come on, I don't need to explain why Street Fighter 2 was such a catalyst for fighting games. So I'm not gonna. It clearly took some time for fighting games to take shape, and the history of the genre is such an intriguing thing to look into. Fun fact, Street Fighter 2 actually held the number one fighting game in terms of sales, until Smash Ultimate came along and <laughs> smashed. My belongings! What the hell? But everything starts from something. Everything grows from one little seed. I'm itching to eat the seed that gave us Street Fighter 2. This era was like the potato famine for fighting games if potatoes just randomly came into existence. Admittedly, Street Fighter 1 was considered to be pretty decent back then, but it does not hold up. Which isn't a surprise, although I will say that graphically this game does look pretty good. No, well, I, I, I never claim the men with kissable faces. <laughs> Just, I don't know, uh, the environments are detailed and some of these stages mesh colours together quite nicely. For comparison, Contra came out on NES in the same year. Sega Master System saw the release of Fantasy Star. We're not entirely sure if anything came out on the Atari 7800, as well as around the time when arcades were starting to beef themselves up. Right next to what was available on the home consoles, why should I stay at home and play shitty games? Shitty games reside in the nature too. With all these insane differences, you have to enhance, expand, and engage. I like that tree. It's just that in the current meta, trees have evolved, revitalizing themselves entirely. In fact, the trees have become bodacious, so why should I give a shit about Street Fighter 1 in 2022? I shouldn't. The game starts off with- oh my god. Oh crap, what the hell, man. Oh no, my ears. Yeah, no, that's, that's blocked. That's blocked, and yeah, my hearing it, it is just gone. Oh, I need an appointment. The video juego continues by displaying a large and wealthy character select screen for the enemy. Starting off in each of these countries gives you a different location and fire to tackle. You get to control Ryu, complete with his classic Hadouken, flying kick and dragon punch. Stuff that I wouldn't have figured originated from this game. But to its credit, it really isn't so bland as these are pretty iconic moves. But you know who else is great? Ken! You know who else is great? No one. 
because that's all you're gonna get in terms of playable characters, even though these guys seem to have their own movesets that function. And speaking of function, Street Fighter 1 hates that shit. Just moving left to right is janky, just jumping is janky, so maneuvering Ryu is uncomfortable as fuck. It's like he's made of glass. At times, your hits seemingly just miss because you don't have a good feel for the space around you. And even when they do connect, it's a bit underwhelming because this is a fighting game from 1980 down 7. If you think your foot is close enough or if your hands are in the right position for violence, they probably aren't. When you whiff, you already know the enemy CPU is going to come at you with the most horrifying, unpredictable series of attacks and destroy your health bar. It just happens so fast. Fast. I almost always feel like the game is broken, which it is, it's an arcade game from the 80s, every enemy is just insanely ridiculous. Maybe I suck, maybe they designed this game to wring money out of children, maybe it's both, we'll never know. What I don't like is that there is an attention of how, what is he gonna do? Let's move around a bit and uh, get a feel for the fight, is he gonna do a move? That's not really here, both of you are just scrambling around, Joe has me constantly in a a state of panic. I don't know his moves. The rules of the game don't even apply to him. God. No, actually, I, I need to talk more shit about this game. Seriously, Udon is broken. He just is, and so is Cigar. Both move in ways you can't, and both have horrendously unfair attacks. And by both, I mean most of the enemies in the game. The only difference being these two somehow manage to be worse. It just isn't fun at all. Everything you do, fighting, moving, just has this awkwardness attached to it, like it's fragile. So when the match starts, it's more like, oh god, oh no, that one single hit didn't connect, guess he's barreling towards me now. Even when you do get used to it, the bots don't have an issue controlling the game, because they were programmed to actually kill you, so they'll do the most crazy bullshit and beat you so quickly you won't see the attacks coming. What do you want me to do against that? Block? Okay, that's a fair request. I don't want to go to China anymore. Uh, the funny thing is, if I even dared to move during that, he would have melted me anyway. That's not funny at all. Christ, but it's okay, it's okay. I'll just use a super move. It's okay, I'll just play literally anything else now. You see, you can't just mindlessly mash the input and button combination and expect to trigger a special move in this game. It just wasn't designed to work like that. Probably has something to do with the pressure sensitive parts, but Bing didn't help me and I can't find anything telling me why super moves weren't just a single button press. Uh, at least from how hard I looked. The production for how this whole thing came together is actually out there. You know Capcom announced this game in a boxing gym? It's like if Sony announced Gran Turismo by running over Jim Ryan with an Audi. So how the hell do you trigger them? Grab your trusty Super Nintendo controller and put it somewhere else, it won't, it won't be needed. Then play Street Fighter 1 on any device, illegal emulation, legal emulation, 8000 kilogram arcade machine, whichever is most convenient for you. If you do it illegally, I'm gonna be pissed. Do the regular directional inputs, but instead of pressing it, you have to hold the button from the beginning of your movement thing and release it when you finish the movement thing. Like this. Like this. Like this. Did I mention you need to be even more accurate than usual? You could get away with sloppily demolishing your control stick and busting something out in, say, a Street Fighter V. But that's a no-no here. Pulling it off consistently is a challenge, among every other challenge this game gives you. Like a hearing it? <laughs> Let's follow the usual rules, such as timeouts, teleportation, health bars, best of three, timeouts. That's not how seconds work! And eventually, the final boss of your experience. That is when you finally fight enough fights that take you through a surprisingly large amount of environments. Are you a fighting and a fought in for this long? Saga is the game's final challenge. And if you own the Street Fighter Source, you'll know this fight is infamous for being the origin.
origin of Sagatska and his vengeance for you. Such a tense battle and the true beginning of a legendary game franchise. I think to honor the canon, I'm going to finish this as it was intended. <laughs> nah, get him off my screen! Finally, I, I I did not expect that to be such uh, uh, huh? Distinct distinction. Uh, I, I I I'm a what? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. For an early fighting game, it had quite a large scope, and the mechanics aren't as rusty as you'd expect, or even too far off from the sequel. As far as I can tell, it was both the first to introduce super moves being triggered with secret combinations, and the first to let you strategically plan out your attacks, because of the three ranges of strength, punches and kicks, weak attacks coming out faster, and strong attacks taking longer. And when you look at what else was even in the market at the time, it makes sense that people would seemingly be into it. Not to say these games were bad, but they just weren't this complex. I think that Street Fighter was a somewhat respectable stepping stone for better things we may not have had otherwise. It's like the ocean, imagine a world without plastic. It would suck. Oh cool, oh uh, look at all this blue, oh. But you put a straw in a fish, suddenly the whole world cares. I relate that to Street Fighter, you get what I'm saying. It's a shame this game is dog sh with an easy place as the worst Street Fighter. But that's also why I understand it being talked about so little. Outside of the novelty, there's really not much here. But inside the novelty, Street Fighter didn't have the most conventional release, from the arcade to the Amiga to the Commodore 64 release to the PC Engine release. Anywhere but a platform criminals would have known. You know, the game actually got labelled as Fighting Street in these two versions. Cause the f***ing stupid pavement deserves it, that's why! Uh, even if the game isn't the best at all, not even close to it, so far from being the best. There are good parts of the game, being on a CD-ROM, being on an arranged soundtrack, making these, in my opinion, boring songs pretty exciting and flashy. With a better soundtrack, it only makes sense to take that into all future versions. It only makes sense. Capcom Classics Remixed. Don't be confused with Capcom Classics Collection. Or Capcom Classics Collection Volume 2. Or, or Capcom Classics Reloaded. Or Capcom Classics Genesis Collection. All with different assortments inside. I swear it's simple to understand. Th this. This PSP game is honestly a cool little collection by itself. And after finding out that this 1987 hit was on it, this PSP game is honestly a cool little collection by itself. And I guess this is the first official way of playing the game portably. Unless you can't playing it on a laptop, but that, that, that would undermine what I said, so don't consider that. Capcom Arcade hits Volume 1 in 2003, a PC release on a disc. What a waste of time. My PC doesn't even have a disc drive. Who the hell did they make this for? Oh, but did you think Capcom Arcade hits Volume 1 was the first re-release? Are you? 
reasonably prepared to believe everything I say? Oh, it's obviously Street Fighter series, which came out in 1994, packaging the first two Street Fighter games for DOS. Thank you, Moby Games, I don't like his music. Barring those, the most recent remaster brought Street Fighter 1 onto modern platforms with the 30th anniversary collection, which came out in May 2018, around 10 years after the PSP version came out. Now, this is honestly a pretty sweet collection, although it's probably better if you're more of a single player person when it comes to Street Fighter, considering it has netcode issues. I like it, the menus are slick and while I usually turn off borders and collections, these ones are kind of immersive, making me feel like I'm looking at an arcade playing these games. You have lots of concept art to look at and hell, any tidbits of information about a game are a great way to make collections feel like somewhat of a grand experience. <laughs> <laughs> With 12 games packed in, you really do get so much replay value here. And how could we forget such an influential fighting game, uh, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, <laughs> which is uh, sitting right next to the highlight of the whole show, Street Fighter 1. Let's play some Street Fighter 1, yeah! Let's see what they changed in this special collection, yeah! Hmm, whoa, 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 yeah, yeah, no, that's, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay, it's okay. The, the differences are in the details, of which there are none. At the end of the day, it's not surprising, they barely re-release it. Street Fighter 1 isn't special enough of a game to have its own pop. And unlike every other Street Fighter, the mechanics are basic, the controls are sluggish, it doesn't have a power pass, it doesn't feel refined. Combining all of these things together, the gameplay is just awkward. I guess you do expect that to some extent, uh, considering when it was developed. I don't believe most humans developed in the A's know what the hell is going on. To top it off, barely anyone's really gonna go out of their way to get something like this. Why don't we throw it into a collection? I get it. Well, even if it is just for novelty's sake, it's a good thing. You can genuinely go onto any modern platform and letting you play not just the first game, but all of these great Street Fighters. I was not talking about you get the hell away from me whether it's good or not i honestly think to have a glimpse into the beginnings of any franchise is pretty important for preservation's sake and obviously for that nice little slice of novelty so please preserve a funk rail god let the powers that be preserve a funk rail what? hey 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 that's not funk at all